John C. Lilly studied biology and physics at the California Institute of Technology and then graduated from UPenn Medical School in 1942. By the 1950s, he was working for the American National Institute of Mental Health studying the brain. This included a study on the physiological effects of high-altitude flying during World War II. Afterwards, Lilly would develop the isolation tank. Lilly, who experimented with LSD and other psychedelic drugs throughout his life, was interested in the altered states of consciousness that could arise due to sensory deprivation. The isolation tank achieved this by blocking out light and sound and also blocking out physical sensation by maintaining salt water at skin temperature, thus allowing the subject to float while experiencing complete sensory deprivation. Another one of Lilly's interests was studying dolphin communication. He noted that dolphins had a more extensive vocabulary than other animals, who just had calls to signal danger or desire to mate. While studying this, his wife, Mary, commented that one of the dolphins seemed to be imitating his speech. He saw this as a breakthrough, indicating that human-dolphin communication might be possible and began devising experiments to test this hypothesis. News of this research reached the astronomer Frank Drake, the founder of SETI, or the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Drake's team was interested in the research because they thought it could pave the way for human-alien communication if we made contact. This led to Lilly receiving funding from NASA and the U.S. Navy, which he used to build a facility in St. Thomas, known as the Communication Research Institute, or colloquially, the Dolphin House. In 1965, Margaret Howe, a college dropout who was living on the island at the time, heard about Lilly's research and went to investigate. When she arrived at the Dolphin House, she met a researcher named Gregory Bateson. Bateson asked her why she was there, to which she responded, Well, I heard you had dolphins, and I thought I'd come and see if there was anything I could do. Specifically, there were three dolphins at the facility. Two females named Pamela and Sissy, and a male named Peter. Bateson allowed Howe to observe the dolphins and asked her to write down her observations of their behavior. Bateson reviewed her notes and told her she could come back whenever she wanted. With the approval of Lily, Margaret returned to participate in the study. Lily himself was gone most of the time, relying on others to carry out the research. Margaret began working with Peter, but became annoyed that she had to keep leaving and returning. Her solution to this problem was to repurpose the building at the site, flood it in knee-deep water, and live there for the duration of the study. The modifications included a dolphin elevator that she could use to transport Peter between the first and second floors. Margaret lived with Peter and attempted to teach him English. Much of this work involved Margaret speaking to Peter and getting him to repeat what she said. In some instances, she covered part of her face in white makeup and then put black makeup around her lips so Peter could clearly see the shape of her mouth as she was speaking. Gregory Bateson and his wife Lois were there conducting a separate study on dolphin communication and didn't think the idea of teaching dolphin English even made sense. For one thing, dolphins' vocal cords had evolved to make very different noises, such as clicks and whistles, with some of their communication even occurring outside of the range of human hearing. That being said, Peter was able to mimic many of the words Margaret spoke to him. At one point, Carl Sagan visited the Dolphin House to see how the research was going so he could report back to Drake. The astronomers wanted to know more about dolphin communication and suggested an experiment. First, two dolphins would be separated so they couldn't see each other. Next, one dolphin would then be taught a procedure to obtain food. Finally, the researchers would see if the first dolphin could communicate the procedure to the second dolphin. No such experiment was ever successfully completed. Instead, Lily, who was off experimenting with LSD during this time, encouraged Margaret to continue with the English lessons. As Howe continued working with Peter, she noticed that he was getting a little feisty and rubbing up against her. At first, she dealt with this by putting him on the elevator and lowering him down to play with the two female dolphins. Eventually, however, she decided to relieve him so they could get on with the lessons. Lily wanted to study the effect of LSD on the dolphins. Margaret, who had no problem stroking sea mammal schlong, drew the line at drugs. Lily compromised by leaving Peter alone and just giving LSD to the two female dolphins. At one point, Lily gave the dolphins LSD and then started jackhammering near them to see if they would respond to the sound waves. There was no notable response. The Batesons, who were apparently fed up with the bizarre research, left. 
Lily himself was losing interest in the research at this point, instead preferring to focus on LSD. And as it turns out, the US government wasn't particularly interested in paying for an interspecies boarding school slash brothel. The funding was cut and the dolphins were transported to Miami. Unfortunately, in Miami, the dolphins were kept in terrible conditions. They were held in small tanks with no access to natural light. Weeks later, Lily called Margaret to tell her Peter had committed suicide. At some point, he simply declined to come to the surface for the next breath of air. No matter how strange the circumstances, Margaret and Peter clearly formed a bond during their time together. To separate them and then house the dolphins in such poor conditions was unquestionably an act of cruelty. Despite the lofty goals of this experiment, the execution was questionable, and the way the dolphins were treated in the aftermath was inhumane. As tragic as the conclusion to this study was, there is a silver lining. Lilly continued his research with dolphins, at one point trying to communicate with them telepathically. During the course of his experiments, though, Lilly eventually concluded that it was wrong to experiment with dolphins in captivity and release his dolphins into the wild. There was also a happy, if somewhat strange, ending for Margaret Howe. She ended up marrying the photographer who had taken pictures of her and Peter during the study. They had three daughters who they raised in, you guessed it, the dolphin house. <laughs>